Yeah, hi, I'm Rudy Liquid and I'm getting ready to get on the sofa with um, Donald Spence, you know? So, <laughs> get your camera ready, man, get your camera ready, yeah? I, I you think this look, this look, I like this, this kind of look? I just think this look, I like this kind of look, look. Daga, come, me ready! That's me. <laughs> the big smile. That's how I know. No, because that's smile. you need. I no, love it. no, because you need. You need smile. You need yeah, smiles. Yeah, but your smile is always just lights up a room. It's that's, lovely. That's the whole point of having a smile. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I'm. I'm not too bad. You I'll look be. Well. I'll be honest with you. I'm not too bad. I went through like a, st a shaky stage. Okay. Maybe about two years ago when um, my agent kind of fell ill. Oh, okay. Yeah, he fell ill, and um, so that affected so he, everything. Yeah, because he decided to like. Uh, let go of the stable. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And for me, that was like a safety net for like eight years. Of once course, you got your agent handed in certain things of for course. you. So, um, wow. I say that I'm all right because it was. You've been on a journey. You're not yeah, coming it was, back. Yeah, it was interesting because yeah. all, all of all, all of a sudden now the, the the phone is is it's letting off on your phone. Oh wow. Do you understand? Because so you become your it becomes own direct. Agent. Everything right. starts licking you. Mm -hmm. It's licking you personally mm -hmm. because you you, to, you know you can have things organised mm -hmm. in a way where you kind of go, all right. So that's being handled over there. That's cool. Right. Yeah. All I need to do is pick up the phone, talk to one individual. Do you know what I mean? And by talking and to that one done. individual, everything is sorted out. To when it switches, to it's like no, you mean me? I think because you're mm. all over the place. You have got the cruise ship. You worked right. in Afghanistan. Right. You work. I mean, just the thought of that mm -hmm. is just like. When you get that call, how is it to do comedy in front of the troops? Well, it's hard, it's scary, isn't it? That's what I was going to say. They heckle with bullets, it's not easy, <laughs> man. That's what I was saying. No, it ain't. Yeah. It ain't, because, yeah. um, I mean, going out, going out to like places like Afghanistan and Bosnia and Kosovo was really um, a choice that I made. Okay. Um, it was something that I actually went to look for. Oh. Yeah, but it, it is like when you hear of stuff going off, because like, the type of com comedians that I get attracted to myself personally right. Right, are people with a social conscience. Yeah. So if you've, got, if you've got a social conscience, that means you start talking about what's going on yeah. around us and then immediately yeah. about us. So for me, it's like, if you're going to talk about the war, wouldn't it be good if you'd been out there and see what it's like? Not everyone would think yourself, that way. No, but you but, did, yeah. And then you realise that, um, you know, co the, the comedy itself is an industry. It's a massive industry. It's a, it's a industry. massive industry, yeah. Um, really. And... You know, they've got organisations mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. okay, that employ comedians to go out and abroad and mm -hmm. to entertain the troops, yeah? So, next thing I know, I'm up there, I'm on the Chinooks. That's lovely, man. That's like the helicopter with the two thing there. Wow. And you're dressed up in all the gear, the camouflage and everything, and there's a brother with the gun, you know what I mean? And he's, he's looking out over the area. And I'm thinking, if you he gets shot, I'm, I'm taking over. I'm taking over. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to have to handle the gun. You really... Oh, I my gosh. No, that's fear alone for me. Yeah, but that's, I think comedy is, is about fear, though. It is. It's, it's about, it's about but that's, a, that's fear. I mean, you do take things to the limit, and I love that mm. about you, because to me, you fear nothing. I mean, you obviously mm. do, yeah. but you put yourself in that. There's things I'm not going to put myself into. Okay. Maybe that, that means that sometimes my, some of us are too scared to come out of our comfort zone, mm. is where you're not. Yeah. You step out of that, and I love that about you. So when you've done this comedy in front of them, obviously you didn't fail, by the way. No, I didn't fail. Not with the so, troops. Not with the right. troops, I didn't fail. And so how is the comedy... I mean, because obviously you're the first kind of real person they're going to see in a long time, apart from themselves. Mm. So the comedy you use with them, because they're missing home, they're yeah, missing that's, their partners. You see, you, see, you see, all those things that you, that you, that you just now mentioned is, is what the comedy would be about. Sure. It would be about what is going on at home right. right about now. And not only that, but it would be about why are we here? I don't see no massive, um, weapons of mass destruction. Anybody yes. seeing it? Yeah, yeah. When I, I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you're, and but you're talking to British troops. Right. Now, to me, that's, for me, that's, that's like comedy right on the edge. Because these are the people who are supporting our Absolutely. sovereignty. Absolutely. Back home. Absolutely. I've got to get on the plane with them. Mm. Da, 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 da. Was there any black ones? Yeah, there's a lot of, you know what? There's, there's a lot of Grenadian uh, soldiers. Yes. There's a lot of uh, even Trinidadians. Yes, St. you know, St. Lucians, you know. Yes. Yeah. And, um, but for them, when I, when I see them, it's, it's their way of saying, well, here's where I could get a steady income. And yes. I can also um, get a career, do you know what I mean? And I can send money back home. That's the conversation you know I, mean? I have with them too. That's what yeah, I'm saying. So they, it's like black people for me, 
I don't want to say black people, I don't want to say the Moors, because, you know, right. when, when, when you start saying black, it doesn't really tell you who we are. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It just says that you're a colour. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Do you know what I mean? So, whereas, if I say more, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? That tells you who we are geographically, yeah. historically. Because, you know, so when I meet up with, with fellow blacks on the ships and that, I'll, I'll, I'll rip them as well, because they're in the army. What are they doing there? <laughs> Just you and all these white people and me and you, <laughs> and you stand up in here. Start laughing. And yeah, but, and they're, and, but they're going to laugh because of because when you say it's like oh you take your comedy over to the edge kind of like thing, it's not a case of me taking my comedy over to the edge. It's a case of me taking my culture and putting it in your I'm face. I'm not being scared of it neither. You're not being because no, you know yeah. you well, make people. You know, I I seen you do a room and that room would be quiet like oh shoot, but yeah. you control it in a way that you kind of. They got a lot of love. They kind of go, "Oh, I can laugh." It's not. It's like they kind of, "Can I laugh here?" But then they let go, yeah. and it's real because your smile okay. lights up the lights whole up room. The whole room. Oh, yeah. And that's what it does. Yeah. It smiles like it lights up the whole room because you know you've got one of the jokes which I love, which literally is telling British people, "Look, you lot are messed up." Mm. Yeah. And you're saying, you know, there's a part of it I can't do the whole of your joke, but there's a part of it you were saying, you know, a German car driving okay. to an Irish pub. Hilarious. Yeah. Because and you see them laughing because they have to laugh at themselves. And to me, when I watch your comedy, that's what I see. So where did comedy start for you? When did you decide, oh, I want to be a comedian? What happened? What was you doing before? I've got so much to ask. Well, the thing is, is that um, it's not like you can go into a job center and find comedian. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. You, you, you just don't. Um, I think comedy kind of like found me in a depressive okay. state, to be honest with you. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I was self-employed. Margaret Thatcher was running the country. Do you know what I mean? Lost my job. You know what I mean? Going to the job centre, finding myself back out on the street again and right. stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And, um, and we come from a generation who wants to work. Yeah. They have to work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, it, you know, I was just, I was fortunate. I was genuinely fortunate. All right. Um, because from being a self-employed caterer, um, so that's was, what he was. That's what I, oh, okay. Yes, that's what I was. That's so you can was. cook as well. No, <laughs> no, don't tell the wife, man. That kind of thing there. I don't want it to get out there. I've got to tell it, Jenny. You can yeah, cook. Yeah. If you didn't know, you know now. I'm yeah. coming around your house for dinner. Yeah. I've been. I've, I've had yeah. dinner from you. It's lovely. But it was through working in the catering industry that I found out that there was a lot of people who were actors and actresses. Right. Do you know what I mean? And they, um, they, they. I, it was just a coincidence, man. We're talking about maybe '99, and I'm at my cousin's house and stuff. But um, the day before that. It was like um, Art Blakely. I don't know if you know Art Blakely. He's a jazz musician. Yes. Yeah. And you're new the He's an old brother. He's a jazz musician. Just walked into the Waverly Hotel, looked at me, and he goes, "You know, you look like Eddie Murphy, right?" I was gonna say because that's but that's what it really was. That's, Eddie Murphy. I didn't even know who Eddie Murphy was because trading wow. trading places hadn't come out. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Who's he? I didn't well, know. So, but I went like to my him. cousins. I went to my cousins that Sunday for whatever reason it was, and um, they were they were playing Delirious. Right. On the VHS. Oh my yeah. word! And from the time I heard Goonie Goo, I was that on was the floor. Right, yeah. I said, "Oh, so this is who Eddie Murphy is." <laughs> and you look like him. That's Did what I've been told. That you look like him. No, I wouldn't know. I didn't because I, I remember I didn't even know who he was. Right. But one of the guys at the Wavy the Hotel took a photograph and sent it to the lookalike agency. Wow. Right. Because he's just we're all messing about and then sure. ah, yeah, take some pictures. Yeah. I don't care. So sent them to the lookalike agency. Next thing I know, there's the lookalike agency asking me to promote coming to America throughout the whole of Scandinavia wow. and the best parts of Europe, yeah? So I'm this, thinking, you go to this job centre trying to get a job and then this no, happens Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking, God what's, really what's going on, what's going on here? Wow. So the next thing I knew is that there's, there is a, there's, there's this, there's a, um, a fraternity out there of lookalikes. And if people yeah, want lookalikes for, for PR purposes, yep. they go to an agency. Mm -hmm. And in a way, that is how I sort of like got exposed to Eddie and Murphy. And what year is this now? We're talk like I said, well, we're talking about, um, yeah, about 1990. Because okay. I think I was roughly about 28 around then. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I was a young kid, man. Um, and you age well, because I remember you that time. Is you it? age well. well. That's okay. That's okay. Not wrong with Black no, crap, baby. They, I know, but you still, you still feel it. Because I, I swear <laughs> to God. No. <laughs> Donna, man. I'm walking down the street, but I'm in a rush, yeah? Everyone's passing me. What's going on? No, it's going on. <laughs> what's going on, girl? Tell me what's going on. You need to. And I like the cricket now. I don't know what's going on. You like the cricket? Damn, <laughs> really? I've got to pray for you, babe. Let's do the I prayer. Even, now. I did the worst. I did the worst. I, I had a conversation at the bus stop with somebody for no reason at all. Wow. Well, I was, you, you know what I mean? You're there. It's wrong. It's you've wrong, arrived. It's wrong, isn't it? <laughs> No, but you know what? You know when you know. I tell you when you know when you've arrived. This is when you know that you've arrived, right? If you have kids, do you know what I mean? And you call them all the way from their room. And if then you, you say, listen, can you pass me the remote? You cannot be doing that. You cannot be doing that, Rudy. I'm oh, there now. <laughs> Rudy, tell me you don't do that to your poor children. That is oh, so out of order. They're fit as hell. They're fit as hell. 
You really do that? They're fit as hell. My kids are fit, man. They got to run up and, and down sure the stairs. You, I'm sure you got, right, how many storage stairs have you got? We got three. Yeah, I knew it. You're horrible. You're horrible. Not playing, man. You're, you're horrible. horrible. So you're doing exactly what your parents done to you, right? Of course, man. <laughs> of course. Do you find that comedy's a bit sensitive now? I, I, and I, I'll explain what I mean by mm. that. Like, when I used to watch comedy then, you could pass the baton. So if you then made a joke about Luella or Angie mm-hmm. or somebody, they'd be like, what? And they'd go on stage and then and fire back on you. Okay. Now we're so... It seems like it can be quite sensitive now that we're not allowed no, but to do you know, that. No, it's not that we, no, it's not that we're not allowed to do that. I think that the formats of that some of the producers uh, right. of, of comedy, the promoters, sure. where they've got comedians battling against one another, okay. is what's killed that. Yes. Because it, yes. it's no longer friendly banter in right. a way. Right. It should be friendly banter. That's what it's supposed to be. Right. And that's what, it, that's what it naturally was. But now you're, 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 you're turning around as the promoter and you're asking the comedians to antagonise one another. Yes. And, and, it's all, and comedy is humiliating. Yeah. You, you don't know? need to do it on each other. I, right. I don't do those shows. No, I so it, it depends. No, but then it, to me, it's like there's, there's ways that things can be done and ways sure. that can be done. I mean, Absolutely. There, there's certain comedians who can talk to an audience. Mm-hmm. Right? You've got the likes of people like um, Kane Brown, for example. Oh, He's brilliant. great at talking to an audience. Yes. And it's not about, you're, you're not being offensive just to be for offensive sake. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but then there's certain people who will say things that will just come over as being just totally offensive, yeah. and the audience will go against it. Yes. How different do you think comedy is from then till now? Because obviously you've been there's there. More out, yeah, well, you've you, been you there like it, twenty yeah, odd years yeah, at least now. Yeah, but you, when you for, for me now, it's just the outlets that that have changed. Okay. You know, um, from from initially it was a case of everybody having to go to a theatre mm. to go to watch comedy, right? Then from um, going to a theatre, as I pointed out, we we ended up in a club. And then from, from going to a club, it was a case of, right, there ain't enough clubs. Right, yes. So we need more clubs. So then other promoters started springing up, saying, well, we could do that as well, and we can do this as well. Mm-hmm. And, and the scene started to grow. But, it, but the thing is, is, is that it, wasn't, there wasn't, it felt like there was very little structure okay. to how we could grow. Because when I first said to myself, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to do comedy, I found that there were comedy courses that I okay. could do, places like um, Jackson Lane in Crouch End. Yeah? Okay, didn't so, know that. I went there and started talking about my experience, and they go, "Oh, people ain't going to get that. They ain't going to get that." Uh, and that was more of the mainstream circle. Yeah. So yeah. They're going to get not going to get this. They go, "No, they're not going to get that." Because the thing is that my dad was a postman. Okay. Right? Might sound irrelevant, but it's not because when he did his work and he delivered stuff, he delivered it to every phone box, every every letter box. Every letter, right? He didn't. Dis- he was everywhere. Mm-hmm. He's, he's posted. So. I'm thinking to myself, this guy's telling me that my comedy can't work, basically. And if um, other comedians want to come through, that's going to be your mentality, that's going to be your attitude. So you don't take no for an answer? No, why, why should I take that for Which an answer? So I thought that his school is crap, so we'll set up our own school. <laughs> yeah? Well, so I love it. Me and Keith Palmer, we set up um, the comedy school. Um, so the both of you set that up together? Yeah, but the thing is, is that it wasn't just a case of trying to set people up to say to them, listen, here's how you tell a joke. It was a case of we ain't got no industry, you know. So we have to. Create. So we have to create yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's the jokes that we're gonna we're gonna lay down, okay. But then at the same time, if we don't set up our own clubs and we don't do certain mm. things, yeah, uh, we ain't gonna really um, push on, or we're not really gonna get anywhere as such. And, and it was, how long has the comedy school been going now? The comedy school has been going since what? Um, whoa, I think it's ninety six. Oh wow. So it's so you've seen a lot of comics come through yeah, that door. Yeah. So name me a few that's well, come through. I know you've got, you've got, got, you got, you got, you got Kojo, you've got Glenda, do you get Glenda me? You've got Kane, yeah. Kane Brown. you get me? Um, is anybody, is there... Axel. you got no, Axel. Axel. If, if Axel went, because I left the comedy school, okay. um, I left the comedy school like maybe after about eight, nine years in. Okay. Because it, cause my heart was in getting up and performing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's my drive. That's, that's, that's the, what you, that's that's the what thing you that, that gets me up um, yeah. and moves me during the day. You know what I mean? But, but the main <laughs> thing was, was that we'd, we'd created something that was now going to funnel people through and bring them out onto the circuit. So it was, it was understanding as well that our, our, our uh, more circuit or black circuit, so to, so to speak, mm-hmm. yeah, was, it was very small. Yes. It was very... It was growing, but the thing is, is that you get shows maybe once, every, uh, once a month, mm-hmm. maybe you know, and then you got to wait another three months before. If you're waiting on a particular performer yes. to put yeah. stuff on, yeah, yeah. But 
I wanted to get into the business of comedy. I wasn't, it wasn't just yeah, a case of me comedy, saying to myself, yeah. Child, I just want to get up there and be a ghetto star yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to get into the business of comedy. So I found out that, yeah, well, I can, I can actually do the seven, seven days a night, seven days a week. A week, yeah. You know, but the only thing is, is that I would have to travel around in order to do that. And how was your family about that? Because, you know, coming from black families, they're like, do what? Do you tell jokes? You know, how was your well, family about it? When it... I suppose the right, I'd put it this way, as a, as a child growing up, it's like saying I was I was not I wouldn't say that I was the guy who would keep everybody laughing on on the floor and that right. that weren't that wasn't that wasn't my job that was my little brother's job like, okay. you, you would do that you understand <laughs> <laughs> which is which is, so which it, is fine it but, yeah but it was but the thing is, is what they did know was that if I if I if I put my mind to do something and I You're say gonna right I'm going to go I'm right. going to go and do this they're like well you know what we just going to do, do that <laughs> so you had so, support really yeah yeah you had support yeah really. yeah. Yeah, strong black. So, so when you're on the cruise ship, how long are you away for when you're on a cruise ship? The cruise ships, oh man, you can be away for ten days, you can be away for three good little days. Break, though, isn't it? It's, it's a, a lovely break, break man. Yeah. Do you know when yeah. you can get up and go and get breakfast and not cook it? Yeah, and you've got to do the right <laughs> material. You know, you're laughing. You got somebody else baking up your bed. While the wife sits at home. That's all right. Thing. No, she came once. Oh no. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. She came once. You know, but the thing is, right, is that my wife, she's a senior dentist. That's right. Yeah, does she take me to work lovely, when she goes to work? Lovely, lovely. She don't take me to work when she goes to work. So, so what, when I'm on what? a cruise, and I understand I that. Yeah, when I go to you know work. what? You know what? I understand that. Try and you know, being a female, I totally understand that people don't get that. You're like, why well, can't you do any fight? But we're at work. Yeah, we are at work. Yeah, and that's 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 the thing is that um, people up there they they often think yeah you're your family and everybody's gonna be around. But what people don't really know is that as as a stand up comic. That's what it says. It says stand up, and you stand, stand up, up alone. You do. You stand up alone you in Turkey. You, you stand up alone in Brixton. You stand up alone wherever it is you That's go. Right. You stand up That's right. alone. That's right. You, you can know? have great nights, and of that course. one night that yeah. you do badly, yeah. and then everybody looks at you got kind of straight. It's a long walk back. Yeah, that, and that's that's why there's certain things that, that you just don't do. That's why that's why because I've seen I've seen guys who've done cruise ships. Yeah, go out on stage, start talking about cancer, forgetting. Ooh. Well, forgetting that. Some of them in there are soft up and cancer. Ooh, some of them are all, this, this is their some last holiday. Yeah, yeah, some, some of them is their last holiday. And they, and they know that. And they ear lifted him off at the next port. Just <laughs> brrr, really? Yeah. Brrr, took him just ear lifted. Of course. They ear lifted him off. And, the, and then the other thing about being on a cruise is that you ain't got nowhere to go. No, you haven't. So if you die, everyone's walking around going, he was rubbish. <laughs> like, man, <laughs> him. So how do they you book know, you for the cruise ship? You know, because obviously Once now, again, that's... Once again, that's about agency. So now you have, and you're, and you're yeah, like, how do because, you get that now? Because right, you get through your bookings is, this, now, yeah, I take it. Because I didn't, like I said, I, 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 I weren't playing. I was like, you know what? After we did the, the, the two night one and everything, and um, a lot of them guys, a lot of them guys were actors <coughs> um, in, term, in terms of the comedy world, you know, Robsy, Eddie Nestor, and yeah. do you know, all of those guys, they were actors, mm -hmm. kind of like things. But as a, as a stand up, that was like different. It was like. Sure. Nobody really knew where you were supposed to go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and hence that's why I said I kind of like realised that I, I've got to go and look and find out who who these agents are and who these agencies were right. and do your proper research and your groundwork, you know, and then you know start making calls myself direct to them. But I love that because you're very deep and you're methodical when you think and what you're I'm doing. I'm a Virgo, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. Virgos, that's what we do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I, fa I, fa I found myself the agent. You know, um, and then once I found um, the right agent for me, it was a case of I started doing stand up um, on TV. So I started doing the stand up show and because you were the first like black that. comic to do um, yeah the stand up show the stand up so the BBC yeah stand -up one stand up yeah show. well done yeah because it was to me it was it was it was about time that they started to hear um, a social black voice yeah on TV that's that's questioning some of the things that they may be saying about yeah. us yeah. You know? And you've done that so well. Well, that that's for me. That's the that's the biggest kick. Mm. That's the biggest kick. And how are they after you perform? How are the audience to you afterwards? The the audiences are always receptive. Right. Afterwards, but I'll be honest with you. Once I've done a show, mm. that's when I become shy now. Yes, because you're off the stage. Because I'm not on the stage now. Right. You just kind of want to go. I'm to like, corner. you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas the, you, you've got other comics who are fantastic and they'll just come out and dive in there yeah, and no. splosh around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, yeah, me, yeah. me, 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 me. You've got that yeah. like, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I mean, when I, I remember first getting, when I get in my first standing ovation in, in Camden and stuff like that, 
and I started getting them and I and, and I used to just go and, and hide in the dressing room. I was like, Fuck, man, Yeah, know. that's me. I understand you know, that. Totally. Out here now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Where is and you had yeah. you had other guys who would just yeah. go out and dive into it yeah. and and, yeah. and lap it you all just up. Kind of, I've done my bit now. Yeah, um, yeah, because like I felt finish work. Yeah, like I, finish I felt work. comfortable. Yeah. Especially it was like okay, don't have to do too much PR. I've got an agent. He's he's handling that. People right. make calls to that. So, you know, um, life's fine. You've also been a radio presenter on Unique FM. It's called the Madhouse. Yeah, that was with um, DJ Peter Terry. That night, nah, man. Nah, <laughs> the both of you are mad nah, together. Nah, nah, nah. Did you enjoy it though? And I, would you do it again? I, I I wouldn't I don't know I just, I couldn't be a DJ I couldn't right. not on radio anyway right okay to be honest you know um, and why is that because I like you I like live right I I genuinely so like, you I like it live but I like, you're just not on radio when there's I like no one the, I like watching people in their eyes in their face I hate it if I go on stage and it's like the lights are so far down you can't really see an audience yeah you like the lights I down. like I like them slightly up so I can see them and they can see me right. whereas when you're on radio you get me you just you're just talking but you don't. You don't know. You don't, you don't exactly know who. And the only, you, room, yeah, yeah. the only thing that tells you, yeah, the only thing that tells you is that phone ring. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I've been into pl- in, when I've gone to <laughs> do radio interviews. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, you're doing the interview and, and like you know, you're talking with, with the interviewer and like you're about three, four minutes in and you're like, this is a pirate radio station. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pirate, yeah. Here you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, your phone ain't wrong once, blood. Am I wasting my time? What am I doing here? What am I doing? Here? What am I doing here? It don't sound like you got no listeners out there, blood. You know, your phone don't oh ring once. Yes, okay. All the way to Coventry for this on a Wednesday night, blood. Come on, come on, man. That phone, that phone better ring. Yes, You're okay. so Look. terrible. You just got, you just got. To, that's because you don't know with radio. But it's, but then if you, you get don't. good radio presenters. Do you know what I mean? Who can hold your? Who can hold you? I can see you, you saying that. You know, your phone ain't what? I can see it in mid conversation. Yeah, of course, why, why not? Because you think you drive all that way? Because <laughs> as I say that you're, aren't you doing a history, a, a, a black history book on? Well, what this is what, what I want to do. On is, comedy. I want to do. I want to. I want to do some research, some really strong research um, on the history of black British comedy. Excellent. You know how it came about. Um, how, how did it develop? Yes. How did it? How how it, how it's um, affected us? Who was involved? Mm. You know. Um, I mean, everyone, we will always go to Lenny Henry and we'll always talk about the black and white minstrels, sure. right? Um, and some people may vilify him for it or whatever, but they can't yeah. because at the end of the day, there were, there were three places that you can work as, as a black person mm-hmm. in the day of, of slavery. You either worked in the field, you worked in the house, wow. right? Or you played that fiddle, yep, yep. right? Because it was through playing that fiddle yes, mm-hmm. that you start getting the performer, right? yeah, who then starts to dance, you miss the bow jangles, yep. okay? Your mud meets, that's the the black face, mm-hmm. black people blacking up, but they were getting up and they were performing. Right. You know, um, and like all that history I love. So, right. you know, some, certain comics might say, well, I'm not really interested in that, but I like to know where something is coming from to yeah. know where it can go to. and you can teach somebody else. To. At least if it's there, then there's a choice. Mm. And that's really mm. what is a, is a choice. I think it's great that you want to, what, you want, actually want to do that. Um, like when are you looking to, to actually make that happen, to get that book out there? Or are you working on it right now? Well, this now? is what I'm saying. I'm working on it, I'm, I'm working on it right now. So all the research um, that, I'm, that I'm doing, you know, will, will build up to that. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see exactly um, what I'm going to say come Black History Month. Right. Because you've got your one-man show. Right, because it's going to be an hour show on, right. on there. Um, but it, it, will be, it will be a culmination of that. Um, and... The, the, the things that I that I dredge up and that, I, that I'm that I'm gonna, gonna want to talk about. Um, and where are you doing that show? Once again, that's going to be at the Comedy Cat. Ah, okay. Right, which is quite interesting when you okay. think about it. Okay. You know, because like to me, that's like the first wave of Black British mm-hmm. humour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you you had a second wave. The second wave was after the Comedy School was set up. Okay. Once the Comedy School was set up, yeah. and then the lights of Kojo and everybody started yeah. coming out. Yeah. These guys came out with the intention of, right, we set up our own club. Not yes. we go looking for work. Yeah. There's a big difference. Yeah, massive difference. Right? So when you turn around and you say to me, like, um, how has comedy changed nowadays? It's changed massively because at one point we would have to go out and give out flyers. Yeah. Yeah. Now the guys then are putting stuff on YouTube. You know. So they're not waiting they're anymore. They're not waiting, no. But then, so, so it's, it's like saying in a sense, work done because we've, we've created a way in which the, the, the black British youth could manoeuvre their way round the system and out to distribution. Do you think, though, uh, because there is no more flyers, yeah. I mean, there are still people that hand out flyers, but yeah. because there's no more flyers per se, yeah. do you think there's still a section of the audience that's missing? Um, 
the flyers haven't gone away. That's that's right. that's one thing that I'd, that I'd want to so say. You still come out of a rave and see your car pack up with flyers. Yeah, I'd I'd, <laughs> I'd say all that happens is, is that the, the audience turns over. It moves. It moves. Yeah. Because uh, my, my the generation that was with me going to cabaret, do you know what I mean? We're all parents now. Or yes. grandparents. Yep. Do you get me? Yeah. So it's the kids of the kids in a sense. The, who's the, there coming? Who, who, yeah. who are doing their thing now? So yeah. Kojo coming out of Corks was doing a thing once that again. Yeah. So with that now and then it's like with, from that movement we've had a glut of other, of other comedians who were coming through you know and then you've got places like Stamina you've got LOL you're doing their mm -hmm. shows and that they're all to me they're all like LOL seeds that have all that grown that they're, all, they're all seeds that have all grown through, but mate. they've all they've all grown via for me anyway from what I saw they're all going via like the 291 they're all going through the real McCoy do you get me they're all coming through the comedy, to the comedy school you know, and then they're, they're starting to branch out. And then, got, you know, people are now on um, radio, they're right. on TV, they're presenting, they're, and we're all, we're all part of that game. Right. You know, and um, it, to me, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful scene to be in because it doesn't judge you, it doesn't discriminate against you. And comedy, is, it's, they say it's an aphrodisiac, for, for example, you know, it releases yeah, endorphins. But, but it, 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 for me, it does more. I mean, we took... We took the comedy into the prisons as well, yeah, because I was say, yeah, yeah, because the thing is, is that you can you can use you can use comedy in terms of um, helping helping people to get MVQs, qualifications for, wow. for writing, for being oral, for, for, for performance skills. And we, I, you know, I don't know if many females got the call to do prisons. We never really got that call. Um, I, I yeah, but you have to go in there for one. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I think I Glenda know. did. I think Glenda oh, Jackson did did, okay. a, did a few courses and stuff oh, like okay. in there. You know, um, but to perform stand up, there was I know there was performing stand up in there was weird because they, they always ask. make you do it in the chapel. I know oh, of all places. No way. No, I just have to go and put a little cloth on Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be like, I can't even swear right now. <laughs> and I was going to say, you know what I wanted to ask you as well? Yeah. How's it? Because your trademark is smoking cigarette on yeah. stage. I'm so glad you can't smoke anymore on stage. Are you? How do you feel? I feel, you know, <laughs> the fact that you can't smoke on stage now is very frustrating <laughs> for me. For me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because it means now that I got to walk into a room and smell armpits. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Before I never used to have to smell armpits, I could smell smoke. smoke it out. <laughs> but now, but is it odd? Like when you when they first said you can't smoke anymore, it's like you know. Or do you have one of them things? No, there's no way, no way, no way. I'm using you just like, do your stuff like I'm trying to catch flies. You know when you're like, oh, it goes blue. It's like, it's like catching flies. No. Not me, um, you know what? The first because I, I always used to see the cigarette, the drink, yeah. the cigarette. I'm, I'm yeah, because like, that was me, Bacardi and Coke. To yeah. get me and a fag, and that's yeah. how that's how I see myself. Yeah. So you can imagine I'm on a cruise. I'm on a cruise. You can imagine I'm out in <laughs> Afghanistan. You know what I mean? You can imagine I'm out in Singapore. I'm out in Cyprus. There's my Bacardi and Coke, my cigarette, and I'm on the go. And I'm that's and I'm just trademark. nice. And I'm just that's nice. I'm actually like not seeing you with a cigarette because you don't look like a smoker. You just so don't need it. So it's really weird. I'm like this. He hasn't got a cigarette in his hand. It's so funny. But you know what's gonna happen the moment I leave here? Isn't it? Uh, listen. Hey. If you can get out of the door quick enough, I'll tell we know. You, man. I'm going to go and invest in a packet of fags for minimum <laughs> wage. That's what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> that's what they cost, minimum wage, you know. You see, and so name. you should be thanking me because that helps the NHS. Me. Yes, it helps the NHS. That's it helps a whole other conversation. Let's even start there. You also um, hosted the after um, show part, the Brit Awards. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. How was yeah, that? Yeah. That was weird. Okay. That was weird. Do you know what I mean? the after show party that you're yeah, hosting. So who's yeah, saying, yeah, how does that yeah, work? Yeah, yeah, because... It's like they, they, it's like they've, they've done the awards and whatever thing, and everybody's coming out, and they've got people on stilts walking round. Oh, you get me? You, know, you got people weird. um doing, doing the acrobats yeah, yeah. and the juggling and all that kind of thing. And um, no one's really interested in what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you're up on stage, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And everyone's just walking around, walking around. Yeah. But then you just got to introduce an act. Well. Yeah. But all you've got to do is just introduce the act, and just I guess moments like that, you just enjoy them. Because, I mean, I remember, I remember seeing Amy Winehouse and stuff like that oh, right, yeah. back then, do you know what I mean? And they were saying that she needed to go to rehab. She needed to go, she needed to go to rehab. She needed yeah, to go. I, she needed I remember. To go when I saw her. She needed mm -hmm. to go, but I was looking at her thinking, she needed to go. So if there was any advice that you would give to, I mean, obviously we know you do the comedy school, so mm. put that one side. Mm. If, what advice would you give to your younger self? So it's a two-part question. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to the comics that are out now, the new comics? A new comic came to you and said to her, you know what? Um, what advice can you give me? I have stage fright, or I have one. What advice would you give them? I mean, that was a specific question. You have stage fright, do you know what I mean? Then maybe you shouldn't be doing it. 
Woo, Barrio. Okay, maybe it's nah. change question. <laughs> when you said the tribal geeks, like, keep it real. come to me, I'll no, help no, no, you. No. I mean, the only, reason, the only reason why people have, I think, the only people, reason why people have stage fright is because they're not prepared. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, that's what, that's, that's when, because when the thing is, when you start talking comedy, it's not funny. That's no, it's the, not. That's the weirdest it's thing not. about it. Do you get me? Um, but it's, it's true. It's, just like it's just like any other job in a way. Do you get me? If you if you're gonna present <laughs> something, know what you're gonna talk about. Write it down. It's about your research. Study it. Research but it. Don't you remember the times? I'm sure. Don't yeah. you remember the times that you've written a joke? Uh, yeah. And you've rehearsed it in the yeah. mirror. However you rehearse it, yeah. you get to the venue to do it. Yeah. And you're not getting the laughter. You didn't. You didn't kind of counteract that. You didn't even. Is that what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> No, I know what you're saying. Uh, no, because the, the thing is that you've got so many different sensibilities in a room, and that, that's that's why it's not a good idea, really, to go up verbatim. Right. Yeah, that means to be scripted. Yes. Yeah, that means every word. Right. I, 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 yeah, 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 right. yeah, I took yeah. that school. I learned. Yeah. Oh, you learn. It's me who never learned. <laughs> you never try learned, speak word like yeah, I try pop star. Yeah, I'll I'll try. I'll try. try. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, it's, it's just lack of preparation. Hmm. And, and, and and not only that, but it's the more you do it, yeah. is, the, is the more confident yeah. you become. So really, that's what you're saying, you, yeah. it would really be about yeah. the more you do it. It's, 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 about getting, it's about getting up there. It's not easy because the thing is, everyone wants to become, you know, um, funny overnight, um, which in this game, yeah, ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Gonna happen. You know what I mean? Two, two other things I want to ask, two TV appearances, The Heart of Harlem, okay. which you starred in, and of course, okay. Show Me the Funny. Yeah, those two to totally different contrasting yes. shows. One was like a, a docu soap kind of thing, yeah. like thing. Um, and the heart of Harlem. We talking about that's heart, heart of Harlem. I can't remember having this quite a few years ago now, but it yeah, was that's a number really of years back. But it was it was interesting good. to do because it was it was <coughs> like a fact finding thing about yeah. who is Rudy and what is he doing and and what has he done. Um, I guess uh, it's, it didn't it didn't take me where where I, where I directly wanted it to go because I guess. At the time, my real push interest was to just become the best stand-up that I possibly right. could, and do that, do that around the world, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a great time. The show, the show me the funny was quite eye-opening, very much so, because it was it was confusing to say the least. In is, that, I was going to say, is it the way they edited it? Because I, you know, I I watched it and mm -hmm. I was like, things like that put me off TV because I know they edit in it because I know you as well. Okay. And obviously I know Prince Abdi, yeah. and I look and I go, mm, how did you edit that? What did you put there? Mm. It, that's how I felt when mm. I looked at it. I kind of took it personal. How was it for you I think anybody would have taken it personal, to be honest yeah. with you, because they, it was obvious that they, they decided who they wanted to win in the show. Sure. Okay. Um, you can't, it, it's, it's difficult to fathom that you've, you've gone out on stage, you've got a standing ovation, because at the time I got a standing ovation mm -hmm. from the audience. But yet, for all I'm being asked, um, why did you do this and why did you do that? Right. Like why was, in fact, why was you talking about being black and why was you? And I was like, raw. So, mm. what you're saying to me really is, is you want somebody that you can mold, not somebody who's got their own opinions, their own mind, yeah. kind of like thing. Um, they want you to be coloured. They want me to be coloured. They want you to be coloured, <laughs> love. They want me to be coloured. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my words. I'm clear. It's my words. I'm, I'm saying that as Donna Spence, I just felt that they wanted you to be coloured. And that's just how TV is at times. Which is why it's it's so good in a sense that we've we've found different outlets to put on what we want to put on. Right. You know. Um, yeah, I think on one level, it, it, we, you have to knock on the door of the BBC. You have to knock on the sure. door of yeah. ITV and all the, the mainstream channels. But it's it's ultimately about doing for self, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And and Heart of Hearts and didn't take it to where you wanted, but he still did. You still walk down the street and people go, "Is you in it?" N n well, nah, nah, nah. You know that's what I'm saying. Did you become a big soup in Halston, though? No. Okay. I I keep it low. <laughs> I'm serious, Donna. I'm, I keep I believe it low. You. I don't. Like you said, when you finish your show, yeah, you get I shy and no, that's it. D, I keep it low. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because because the, the thing is, is that people know you anyway. Yes. Do you know what I mean? And black people are like that. Yeah. And and in, in a no, way they yeah, in a way they kind of humble you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because you walk down the street and you and you knew that they watched the program yeah, the other yeah. night there and you're walking past and you just go yeah. And then like, <laughs> black people are like. Oh, you didn't see me. Yeah. You didn't see me. So <laughs> all right, then you never see me. All right, then you never see me. But you know what? When you come at me and I see you, I like, can't see you. I go see me and you go hear me. It's but it's true. It's, it's true. no. I like. You know, sometimes I didn't come in the, into this for fame. 
That's what I'm right. trying. This is what I'm trying to point out. In a sense. It, yeah. I love what I do. Yeah. And do you know it what shows. I mean? And it's like it's so shows. It's it's like as so long as I can I can support my family. I can pay my kids. I can I can do what I do. And at the same time, I can have a I can have a voice. You know, I can uh, I can contradict society. I can and it, and sometimes it feels like you're representing. Right. You know, um, I'm happy. So. We know that you've got the uh, the book that you want to write. Yeah, yeah. And we know you've got the one man show coming up for yep. Black History Month. Yep. What else is there for Rudy Wit? You know, ultimately, I would I would love to like have a, a, a really good like magazine kind of like show, in okay. a sense. You know, where you like have a talk show. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like you know, I mean, it's like me. I, I, it'd be the v- vice versa. Do you know what I mean? There's so Donna do Spence, and then you've got like Peter Huntingale, you interview Peter Huntingale. So and do you do, it. You know what I mean? That kind of thing would do be it. wicked. I think that thing You don't have wicked. to wait on TV anymore. This is the great thing about people like LOL. But this is, yeah, yeah but that's why, that's why I'm saying that. Yeah, but there's a difference, right? Um, in terms of energy. That's how I look at it okay. now, where I'm, where I'm currently at. You okay. know what I mean? And then you say, if you talk to a younger comedian, what would you say to him? Right. Kind of like thing. You know, in, when, when they've got journeys like that, you know, they're coming through uni and whatever you go, you tell the young community, link up with all them production man them. Yeah. Do you get me? Get all your cameras and everything in mm-hmm. order. You know, because when them not start running with, with the younger energy kind of like thing, sure. you, you come to a man like me, you have to go pay me because I have to come off my house. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Them you, them, they're just happy to be out and to be doing and to be creative. And it's, <clears> and it's, it's But that's like when you first started comedy though, you came out mm. and you done it, I love, it's the same, it's the same yeah. thing. Like I could, for me, I love anything to do with the arts. I love, you can, you and I, I say, I know it's because you've seen you do the comedy. It. Yeah, you do. I love it. I absolutely love doing everything to do with it. Mm. It's not about money for me. Yes, of course, it's yeah, about so money. Yeah, but, cause, you know. but I look at it. I look at it. I also look at it that if if you do anything long enough and you yes. become proficient in it, you, the money will come. I agree. And, you know, I believe you should. I believe chase your passion. Yeah. Not the money. And the money will come. Yeah. Absolutely chase, agree. chase the passion. You know. Um, so would you say that, the, that a lot of the young comics are more about the money today than the, what would you? Would you, uh, without judgment, yeah. you know, do you no, think it's a bit different? No, I wouldn't say that. N- not a, but they not, get not, things done, they, don't they? Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's, it's, it's about the money, but um, not of the generation coming forward now, is how I would put it. Because um, when us that was all, me- all doing our thing, it was a case of, well, you know, are you going to get the Birmingham? Yeah, I'll feed you, I'll and feed you. It, yeah, <laughs> um, but... It's like, I don't know, D. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I've got lost there. You, listen, you don't need to worry. There. All I, I know is, there. I want to thank you very, very much okay. for doing this interview. Give me some love. Give me some love. Give me some love. That's the liquid. Uh, some... That was our time. That she kicked in just now. <laughs> she yeah. just wants her cigarette. It, she just wants. Yeah, he just she... wants his cigarette. I, know, I so look like a tree See you soon. <laughs> <laughs>